Today, we're going to talk about the toxins that are lurking in your kitchen. And I'm not going to be talking about the obvious toxins like the chemicals and detergents and bleaches and cleaners and bug sprays, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to talk about those hidden toxins that you might not be thinking about. All right. The first one I'm going to talk about is microplastics. Now, what are microplastics? These are the tiny little pieces of plastic that get shed into our food and into our water from containers that we store our food in. You know that the container, the plastic container you buy uh, that you can actually put leftovers in, you know the uh, containers you get for takeout, you know that the plastic cups that your drinks come in or the plastic bottles that your beverages uh, come in or even the plastic jugs that uh, water gets delivered in, right? Or bottled water. Uh, so turns out that microplastics are shed into our food and our water. And when we actually drink them, guess where they go? Everywhere. And our body doesn't know how to get rid of it very efficiently. In fact, it's been estimated every single week, uh, the average American ingests a credit card worth of plastic. That's a huge amount of plastic. It gets into our organs. It's been detected in our blood, uh, which is pretty scary. And more recently, there's been a study published uh, in the New England Journal of Medicine by uh, a group of researchers from Italy, from Belgium, and from the United States. And what they've actually found is that people with cardiovascular disease have plastic embedded into the plaques that are blocking their circulation. They were studying uh, people that were getting something called um, an atherectomy. This is the procedure that's often done in the neck where there is a narrowing due to the blockage and uh, you go into the neck, a vascular surgeon, and you just pop out that uh, the, the plaque that's blocking it. What they actually found is that many uh, of the patients actually had fragments of plastics microplastics and nanoplastics, even smaller, studying these plaques. This is actually crazy to think about, but obviously the plastic has got to go someplace that we eat. Uh, this research study found that those people who actually had plastic embedded in their plaque had a 4.53 increase in mortality, chances of dying from a heart attack or stroke. That is actually kind of the nail in the coffin. Uh, and I would avoid microplastics and nanoplastics. I would actually avoid all plastic containers uh, in the kitchen. Now, plastics are all around us. Um, and actually, the researchers are not even sure if all the plastics they found in these plaques in the body came from uh, the food, although they, they suspect so. Plastics can also come from uh, the air that we breathe. There's plastic floating in the air. When we're sleeping, we're inhaling uh, plastic uh, into our systems. They've even found plastic in the ocean, obviously, but they found it at the bottom of the Marianas Trench. That's the deepest part of the ocean. So in the kitchen, avoid plastics and microplastics whenever you can. Hey there, I've got something important to share with you. And that is my guide to the three healthy foods that you might want to avoid if you're looking for longevity. Many products that are marketed as nutritious can actually undermine your health. And if you want to find out more about these sneaky ingredients and how to make better choices, then just click on the link below the video for all the details. It's very important to know what's really in your food. And this resource that I'm giving you gives you a head start. Get it right now for free in the description below. Or you can access the guide by scanning the QR code on the screen with your smartphone. Now, let's jump back into the video. Second thing to avoid, charred foods. You know that uh, barbecue grill uh, where you actually get these burnt ends or the steak that you're actually uh, on the skillet and you wind up actually getting this nice char on it, okay? Be really, really, really careful. That char is a carcinogen and it uh, is composed of, they, we even know what's actually in it that makes it particularly dangerous. There's something called PAH, that's polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, PAH, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. And there's also something called heterocyclic aromatic amines or H, 
HCA. So PAH and HCAs, these are carcinogens, really, really nasty ones. So although those crispy burnt uh, ends uh, kind of like remind us of the barbecue, you know, the, the, the fun times, uh, I can tell you that those are the most dangerous parts of the meat to eat. So you've heard enough about like trying to cut down or cut out um, your red meat. Well, here's if you do eat red meat um, by all from all, every angle, what you want to do is avoid the charred part because that is carcinogen. If you have meat, just trim it off. That's what I would recommend that you do. Right. I mean, think about it when you're actually if you have a piece of bread that's actually charred, you're going to cut that off or just toss it out. So don't eat those burnt ends. Third food I want to tell you to avoid is fried foods. Fried foods actually have a carcinogen in it as well. It's called acrylamide. And acrylamide is a kind of plastic. And I want to explain this to you because we all love, I think human nature tells us we love crunchy, crispy foods. All right. I, I love it as well. But I can tell you what the science tells us is that when you fry food, whether it is uh, fish and chips, whether it's French fries, I will tell you that the browner it gets, the crunchier it gets, all right, the more acrylamide naturally forms as part of a chemical reaction. Acrylamide, by the way, is uh, what we use for super glue, all right? It's also what we use in plastic uh, models and other things that you might actually see. That is not something that you want accumulating in your body. So if you're going to eat fried foods, which I don't recommend that you do, uh, if you do it once in a while, okay, as a special treat, don't eat too much of it. Cut it. This is an example of something to cut down or cut out. But be very, very cautious. Be aware that the darker the fried food, the crispier it is, the more acrylamide it's going to be and it's going to accumulate in your body. All right. So let's recap here. Three foods to uh, avoid. Food stored in plastic or beverages stored in plastic because of the microplastic that can get all over our body, including in our blood vessels and even in the plaques. All right. Number two, charred food, charred meats, especially. These are the polycyclic uh, aromatic hydrocarbons or the heterocyclic amines. These are carcinogens and fried foods. Uh, the darker the fry, the crispier it gets, the more acrylamide uh, there is a plastic that accumulate in your body. Another source of hidden uh, toxins is your kitchen sink sponge. All right. Now, this is actually kind of a crazy thing, but we're using the sponge to clean our plates, right? Well, studies have shown that sponges can contain 362 types of bacteria that, you know, the sponge is used to, for the plate. It sits there wet, perfect uh, environment for bacteria to grow. We don't wash the sponge. We actually wash, use a sponge to wash everything else. It just sits there festering and growing like a Petri dish. All right, and, uh, and, and, and how many bacteria can grow? 362 types of bacteria, uh, 46 billion bacteria per square centimeter of your sponge, all right? So what's a better choice? Well, you can actually throw out your sponge, you know, uh, every, after every use or after every couple of uses, perhaps, not very economically efficient, all right, expensive way uh, to clean your dishes, or you can actually use a brush, all right? Brushes have been studied and they've been shown to harbor less bacteria than a sponge. A sponge is like the perfect Petri dish. Brushes are a little bit better, although they also grow bacteria as well. What you want to do if you use a brush is to wash after you use a brush to clean. You want to clean your brush. OK, uh, wash your brush after each use. Uh, use hot water, use some soap on the brush, and that'll keep the bacteria down. Hey there, it's Dr. Lee. I share a lot in my YouTube videos, but sometimes we need a deeper, more personal dive into how food can be used as medicine. And that's why I created my Eat to Beat Disease course. You'll have me as your teacher and guide to unlock the full potential of food that can be used to boost your health. My course is packed with the latest science and practical strategies. It's all designed to be easily followed and something you can start using right away. So whether you want to prevent a disease or fight a disease or just optimize your health for longevity, my course has got you covered. So if you're ready to make a positive change, click on the link below or scan the QR code on the screen right now. I can't wait to see how you're gonna get started to improve your health using food. Now, back to the video. All right, what about another hidden source of uh, toxins? Well, 
soaps and detergents that contain fragrance. You know, the uh, the, the hand soap uh, that actually smells nice, makes your hand smell something nice. You know, it could be lavender, it could be citrus, whatever it is. It turns out that flavoring, these fragrances contain phthalates. That's spelled P-H-T-H-A-L-A-T-E-S, phthalates. And the phthalates have been shown to disrupt our gut microbiome. They actually turn our healthy gut into an unhealthy gut. An unhealthy gut means that your inflammation goes up. It actually can damage your mood because the gut bacteria talking to your brain sends uh, cross signals uh, and uh, lots of other things that your gut bacteria are doing can be disrupted by phthalates found in the uh, scents, the fragrances found in uh, detergents and in soaps, okay? So, by the way, where else do you find them besides soaps and detergents? You see them in air freshener, you find them in cleaning products. Those are all phthalates. So what's the solution? Go for the non-toxic, it should be labeled non-toxic, phthalate-free, look at the ingredient label, look for phthalate-free, no fragrance cleaning products are a much better choice and avoid air fresheners. All right, one last uh, hidden source of toxins is old expired food, right? Now, nobody likes to waste food. We all have leftovers. We keep them in the fridge. Uh, many of us don't purge our refrigerator on a regular basis. So the back of the fridge, you wind up having a lot of food that's been sitting there a long time. Or you actually have food that's been expired and you haven't checked the date. All right, here's the thing. When you have old food, bacteria can grow in it. When you have expired food, exp expiration dates are talking about the quality of the food, but eventually uh, they can actually grow bacteria as well. Bacteria like E. coli, salmonella, listeria. These are the bacteria that cause food poisoning. Now, why do bacteria cause food poisoning? Well, the bacteria release toxins into your food. That's what food poisoning is. You're actually being poisoned by the toxins released by the bacteria that you don't want to be growing in there, okay? We're not talking about fermentation. We're actually talking about uh, the growth of harmful pathogenic disease-causing bacteria. They release endotoxins and other types of toxins that poison our system. How do we know it poisons our system? Well, guess what? It causes nausea, vomiting, cramping, diarrhea, it can fever, sweating. It can even affect your brain and make you confused. All right. Um, uh, and with all that uh, 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 diarrhea, you get dehydrated. Okay. This is why you want to actually be very careful that you're not actually keeping old, uh, uh, multi foods, expired foods, uh, uh, and um, you're eating uh, fresh. And so don't cook so much. Cook for a day or two. You don't want to actually keep the food around for too long so that bacteria will release toxins into your food. I hope you got something out of this video. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Hey, if you like that video, then you're gonna love this one. Check it out.